In a coffee cup calorimeter, two solutions are mixed, 50 milliliters of two molar KOH and 50 milliliters of one molar H2SO4, both at 24 degrees Celsius. The final solution has a density of 1.05 grams per milliliter, a volume of 100 milliliters, and a specific heat of five joules per grams times degree Celsius, and a temperature of 29.75 degrees Celsius. What is the enthalpy change of this reaction per mole of water formed? So not an easy problem. The first thing you want to do when they give you a word problem where it sounds like a chemical reaction is occurring, it's a good idea to write out the chemical reaction and balance it. So that was the first thing I did. I had KOH plus H2SO4, and we know this is a base and this is an acid. So the KOH is going to donate its OH minus and the H2SO4 is going to donate its two hydrogens and they're going to make two waters and then a salt. That's what happens when acids and bases react. And then of course I had to balance this equation by adding a two in front of the KOH and a two in front of the water because we had two hydrogens coming from the sulfuric acid. So they're asking for the enthalpy change of this reaction per mole of water formed. In other words, for every mole of water formed, how much heat is evolved? We know we're in a coffee cup calorimeter, which means this reaction is taking place at constant pressure. Enthalpy is simply the heat transfer or the heat evolution at a constant pressure. So heat, enthalpy is usually written in kilojoules per mole or heat per mole, Q per mole. So the first thing you wanna do here is find the heat evolved. And you can find this with the equation Q equals MS delta T or Q equals MC delta T. And we wanna find this for the final solution after we mix them together, right? That's gonna tell us how much heat we evolved. So in the final solution, we had a volume of 100 milliliters, a density of 1.05 grams per milliliter, and multiply these together, you get the mass, M. Uh, volume times density, the milliliters cancel out, and you get grams. Then I'll multiply this by my S, or lowercase c, my specific heat. Gave that to us as five. And then delta T, this is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So the final temperature was right here. The initial temperature was right here, so I just did final minus initial. And you saw for the heat evolved by this mixing process to be 3,018.75 joules. So how do we connect this to one mole of water? They wanna know the enthalpy change of this reaction per mole of water formed. Well, first we have to figure out how much water is going to be formed by this mixing process, and then we need to turn that into moles. So this is our reaction here. We have two reagents, and water is one of the products. So now this is a limiting reagent problem. So we basically need to see which reagent is going to run out first. And I figured that out down here. You figure out how many moles do we have of this. I found that to be 0.1. How many moles do we have of this? I found that to be 0.05, and then you divide by the stoichiometric coefficient. Here's an invisible one, divided by one, and then the smaller number is the limiting reagent. So this is a rare situation in which we actually get the same number. So both of these two things are gonna run out at the exact same point. So we can use either one to figure out how much water we're gonna end up with. I just picked the KOH because it makes the math easy. They both have a stoichiometric coefficient of two. So I said, okay, we're gonna have 0.1 moles of KOH. And then to change that to moles of water, I know they react in a two to two molar ratio. Moles of KOH cancel out. And I'm left with 0.1 moles of water. You could have done that in your head, really. If we have 0.1 moles of this, we have 0.1 moles of this because they have the same stoichiometric coefficient. So now we know this amount of heat is evolved per 0.1 moles of water produced. So our final answer, if we divide these numbers and then change to kilojoules, just because that's usually how enthalpy is uh, written, we end up with negative 30.19 kilojoules per mole of H2O. And notice how I made it negative. Notice what happened here. The temperature initially started here and then went up. That means this reaction released heat and it was exothermic. And we know for exothermic reactions, 
the heat change or enthalpy is negative. So I really hope this helped you guys out. If it did, please feel free to hit that thumbs up button below and I'll see you guys in the next video.